Okay, I hope everybody can hear me. Again, I'm Lindsay, and we are going to talk today about the coordinated enrollment process and touch briefly on the 2018-2019 expectations that you as lead agencies should be making. Bulletin 140 requires that community networks and sites work together collaboratively to submit specific information for coordinated enrollment and the coordinated funding request. This includes counting all at-risk publicly funded children, submitting a coordinated funding request, and submitting a coordinated enrollment plan. Without these, we at the department are unable to effectively evaluate requests and allocate funding. Each year, lead agencies must meet certain milestones. There are so, these are so important to the success of your community network. At this time, you should have already completed and submitted your October 1 child count and coordinated funding request. The next item on your annual lead agency to-do list is the completion of your coordinated enrollment plan, which we will be discussing today. These will be due in your FTP folders on February 1st. Also due to be completed on February 1st is the setup of all classrooms and scheduling of observations in the class portal. As always, reminders and guidance where applicable will be sent out for all lead agency milestones before their due date. When completing each milestone, lead agencies and program partners within each community network must work together to achieve successful coordinated enrollment throughout the year. Each one of these activities should inform the next. Your child count will give you an idea of how many seats you should request. And when you have a good idea of how many at-risk children you'll be serving, that should guide the planning and subsequent implementation of your coordinated enrollment process. In Louisiana, we know that one of the challenges that families faced was a fragmented system of early childhood programs. Louisiana offers a number of quality options for low-income families, but the lack of a coordinated system for enrolling in one of these programs meant that families were faced with several different challenges. They did not have a centralized way of gaining information about what programs were available in their communities. They would have to visit multiple sites to complete their application and find out if they were eligible for programs offered at that site. There was also a lack of consistency in the waitlist process where parents may be on a waiting list for one site while another provider in the community had available seats. There was not a big picture of the need in each community and how to best meet parents' needs for their family. And providers were responsible for locating families in need of care and recruiting those families to attend their school or center. In implementing the community network system, we realized that what works in one area may not fit the needs of another. Coordinated enrollment requires the local lead agency to collaborate with their partners, the child care centers, the non-public schools, the Head Start centers, and others, in order to reach as many families as they can to provide an educational opportunity to as many, as many at-risk children as possible. Coordinated enrollment conducted at the local level allows networks to ensure that families are informed about all the seats that they have available to them. Families can easily find out what programs they are eligible for without having to apply at multiple sites. It incorporates a system of matching based on family preference and a referral that eliminates both families accepting seats at multiple locations and families sitting on waiting lists where there are seats available, thus maximizing the use of available seats in the network. All of this ultimately results in the greatest number of children being served. Families also have available to them the Louisiana School which is linked in the slide, which provides a wealth of information on the various providers in their community. Bulletin 140 requires that a coordinated system of student enrollment is established within each community network. As lead agencies, you are required to incorporate each component of the four-part enrollment system. The coordinated information campaign, which informs families about the availability of publicly funded programs. The coordinated eligibility determination, which ensures families are referred to available 
publicly funded program. The coordinated applica application, which collects family preferences regarding enrollment choices, and matching based on preference, which enrolls children based on family preference, so no one occupies more than one seat. In implementing your coordinated enrollment process, it's imperative that you include ways to maximize your network's capacity. This includes analyzing historical demand for services by counting seats currently occupied and children on waiting lists, and projecting community needs by determining how many seats are needed and where they are available. When you have a good idea of the need in your community and how to best serve those families, you should be able to better strategize how to implement your coordinated enrollment process. Your information campaign should be to get the word out and engage families in opportunities to learn about programs within your community that are available to them. Eligibility is ultimately the core of all publicly funded programs. We're required by law to fund programs to serve at-risk children. In order to do this effectively, we must have a consistent set of criteria by which eligibility is determined so that the opportunities are equitable and parents are aware of which programs are available to them. The coordinated application allows families to find out what programs they are eligible for while eliminating the burdensome process of having to apply at multiple sites, and it collects information about family preference so that children are enrolled where families prefer to send their child as long as space is available. In order to increase access to early childhood programs, we need to understand where access is limited and strategically think about how to maximize capacity. So what does this mean to you? Lead agencies should analyze all available information to determine the size of your community's at-risk population, how well they have been served, and your current capacity to serve them. Then, consider how many more seats you will need to reduce the at-risk gap for three and four-year-olds, and fully leverage your community partners relationship to utilize all funding available to increase access for three and four-year-olds. There are several funding sources available to serve at-risk birth to five-year-olds in Louisiana. It's important to be familiar with these sources and what ages they can be utilized for so that you're able to maximize your funding and better support early childhood, whether it's through funding seats or through other important ways such as coaching and comprehensive services, to name a few. For example, did you know that your Title I funds can be used to serve birth through three-year-olds in addition to four-year-olds? Easy to understand information helps families choose the best fit for their children. So what does this mean to you? Helpful information guides can be distributed through the community that include provider eligibility information, hours of operation, quality rating, philosophy, and space availability. Families have no wrong door experience while accessing information and support. All programs use the same timeline for applications and communities can use the resource tool, Louisiana School and Center Finder, to provide families with highly useful information. A coordinated timeline, application and process benefits both providers and families. Every provider should know the options available to all at-risk children in the network so that parents can turn to anyone in the network to get the initial information they need. Providers use a unified eligibility determination form. The department provides the family eligibility worksheet to lead agencies annually to assist with this eligibility determination. And a referral system is in place among program partners so that wait lists are reduced and seats are filled. So this is very exciting. In order to assist in your eligibility determination process, we are very excited to announce that the first, after the first of the year, you will be able to use the new eScholar direct match system for determining eligibility of families at or below 200% of the federal poverty limit. This is hopefully going to make the eligibility determination process a lot less burdensome for both those doing the actual determination and the families participating. The department will be hosting two calls, one on Friday and one tomorrow, 
specifically for your enrollment system vendors to provide information to them about incorporating your existing data into our new system. Please make sure that you pass this information on to your enrollment system vendors. It is imperative that they participate in one of these informational sessions. We also strongly encourage you as lead agency to participate in this call with your vendor. The sessions are the same and are being presented twice. So um, you don't have to actually log on to both of them. You just should choose one. We just wanted to make sure we gave everyone a chance to participate. Applications should make it clear to families and providers from the start how space is allocated in the program. A unified application is used by all providers. It provides clear communication and publicity around dates and deadlines, information required for application and enrollment, eligibility requirements, priority admission category, and other impacts on enrollment. There is a central point of entry so that all providers enroll children on the same timeline. And it also allows for ongoing enrollment options throughout the year. Matching based on preference should ensure that every family who submits an application through the coordinated enrollment system will be considered equitably. A coordinated enrollment system focused on equity levels the playing field by improving access to quality early learning experiences. It cannot rely upon a first come first serve method. It should be an ongoing process with a main enrollment timeframe, even if registration is ongoing. And it provides a clear process for responding to questions, complaints, and appeals regarding the enrollment system. So let's take a brief look at the template for this year and some ways to use it most effectively. In order to maximize system capacity and best serve families, networks must know their population and fully leverage <coughs> their community partner relationships to utilize all available funding sources to increase access for three and four year olds. For example, in section A, the top blue section, you should identify the 2018-2019 family demand for publicly funded early childhood seats in your community. This is the unduplicated number of applications received for 2018-2019. Be careful about double counting applications if families applied to more than one program. And this should only include the number of applications for eligible families. In section B, you'll identify the unmet demand of your community for 2018-19. After you complete the October 1 child count, you'll complete the table with the service percentages from your coordinated enrollment work last year. This table should look very similar to what you've uh, completed in previous years. You should also analyze all available data to determine the unmet need in your community. For example, in section D, you will identify how many more at-risk children your community network will be able to serve in 2019-2020 by completing the table with the service percentages from the count and your targets for next year. In the narrative section, please ensure that you have given enough detail in your plan so that any staff member can fully see your vision and successfully implement the plan in your community network. So just to go over some next steps, as I mentioned, we have our e-scholar vendor calls. Um, they are occurring tomorrow, December 6th at 1 o'clock and Friday, December 7th at 10 o'clock. Uh, the link to these were emailed to you and they are also linked um, on the slide that references these calls. And again, it's the same presentation both days. You only need to um, attend and invite your vendors to attend one of those days. Also, if you have questions throughout the week, you can either email myself uh, or you can attend office hours every Tuesday at 3 o'clock with Ms. Kay Eichler. 
and some upcoming action items, your coordinated enrollment plan will be due in your SPP folder on February 1st. And upcoming um, milestones to pay attention to, your February 1 child count will be uploaded to your SPP folder or should be uploaded to your SPP folder by February 28th. And if you have any questions about this or any other uh, enrollment or eligibility topics, you are more than welcome to shoot me an email. My email address is on the screen. And we will pause here uh, for just a minute to take some questions. I think everybody is muted, so if you have a question, um, we cannot hear you, but you can type it in the chat box. Uh, the template for the enrollment plan, as well as uh, the link to this webinar um, will both be sent out. Um, we're hoping this afternoon as soon as we are able to um, get the, the recording translated into YouTube, we will send it out to you as soon as we get it. And it will also be available in the newsletter, which will be sent out tomorrow. <coughs> Do we have any other questions? Again, if you are asking a question through your phone, we cannot hear you, so you should type it into the chat box. Okay, um, will I please explain the eScholar vendor calls? So we will not actually be conducting those calls. Those calls will be conducted by our um, team of experts who know a lot more about technical things than I do. Um, but what they are for is for your vendors to um, call in and receive instructions on how to access the system and um, the information so that you are able to pull information on families by doing a search to determine if those families meet the 200% eligibility requirement. It's very similar to the direct search system. Actually, I think it is the direct search system, but it just has a little bit um, different uh, mechanism because we now go up to 200%. And I think we may have some of those techie people on this call. So if I am not saying this correctly, feel free to shoot me a message in the text box so that I can correct it. But the calls are to uh, give instructions on how to access that information from the system. Do you have any other questions? Will districts who do not have a vendor be able to access the data? I believe that you will um, if you have a data person in your district who has access to the direct cert list now. I 
think, if I'm not mistaken, that they should still be able to access the information. So I would have that person listen in on one of those calls tomorrow or Friday. Uh, hey, this is Nasha. I just want to chime in really quickly. If you don't have a vendor, there is a process for you to use the direct match system that is slightly different. It's still the same system. You still get access to the same data. But um, for folks who have vendors, they'll be able to upload information directly into the system you, from where they're collecting their data. Um, and that just won't be as easily accessible to you because you won't have a system from which you're collecting data from families. But you'll still be able to use the system. You'll still have the same access. And we'll walk through a lot of that stuff in January, um, along with like a how-to step-by-step for both sets of folks, whether you have a vendor um, with a system or not. Thanks, Nasa. Are there any other questions? I'm not seeing anybody typing, so if there are not any other questions or if you think of another question afterwards, feel free to shoot me an email. Um, again, we are going to do our best to get the link to this webinar um, out to you with the template this afternoon, and it will also be available in the newsletter tomorrow. So thanks, everybody, for, um, for participating today, and I hope you have a great rest of your week.